Okay, students, today we are going to talk about chapter six, uh, merchandise inventory, and we have selected this problem uh, from page 644, and the problem is 628A, uh, accounting inventory using perpetual inventory. We have discussed perpetual inventory in which we update our inventory after every sale and after every purchase. And in perpetual inventory, we use three different methods. FIFO method, LIFO method, and weighted average method. A, a business uh, can use any of these three methods. They do not have to use all three. They just have to pick one and they have to stick with it because when they move from a FIFO method to LIFO, LIFO to weighted average and weighted average to FIFO or LIFO, that creates a, a confusion. And uh, it, times uh, people become a skeptic that the business is trying to hide something. Anyway, we are not going to go in that detail, but we're going to learn what is FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. FIFO is simply means first in, first out, means the business is uh, saying that they're using the system because they want to sell the old uh, inventory first and the new inventory at a later date. And in LIFO, they are saying they're always going to sell the new inventory first and if they run out with the new inventory, then they're going to sell the old inventory. In weighted average, they always take out the average of the inventory and they go from there. All right. So now we are going to see they have given us uh, these this data for this company. The uh, the Fed gym began January with merchandise inventory of 78 cr uh, crates of vitamins that cost $4,290. And during the month, they have two purchase and two sale. So let's see what uh, the requirement for this question. Uh, we have to prepare a perpetual inventory record using the FIFO. Inventory costing method that determines company cost of goods sold, ending merchandise inventory and gross profit. And we have to do the same thing for LIFO. And we also have to do the same thing for weighted average. So we're going to do this question three times, one for the FIFO method, one for the LIFO method, and one for the weighted average method. So let's start working on this uh, problem. So first, we are on January 1st and we have total units we have is 78 crates. And the total price for the, uh, the crate is 4,290. So if we take uh, uh, the the cost of 4,290, uh, 4,290 and divide this by the 78 crates we have, it will give us $55. So that means the inventory in hand right now at the beginning of the month, it cost us $55 per unit. So what we did on January 5th, on January 5th, we have a purchase. So we did purchase. How many uh, units we are purchasing? We are purchasing 156 units. And what is the per unit cost? Uh, is uh, $64, All right? And then uh, on January 13, we are making a sale for 180 crates. And uh, uh, the, the sale is $100. So we are selling at $100. Uh, so the sale in this case uh, will, uh, will be 180 units multiply by $100. So our sale is going to be $18,000. All right. Now we have to calculate the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold the goods that we are selling. So we are working this time, we are working using the FIFO method. The FIFO method says the old inventory has to be sold first. So we're going to sell everything that in the old inventory that we have because this 156 is a new item compared to this 78. So we're going to sell these 78 first at a $55 cost and then if we take 180 and subtract 78, we need 102 more items. So we sold this 100, so we sold this here, we left with zero. And here, when we remove 102 items, we left with 54 items. 
So 102 multiplied by $64. So let's multiply this 55 multiply by uh, 78 is 4,290 and 102 multiply by 64 that gives us 6520 and that gives us total uh, 6528 plus 4290 is 10818 dollars so that's the sale okay uh, then again on January 18 we have purchased 140 114 uh, units that 114 unit cost us $75 so the per unit cost is 75 now on January 25th we are sale, sell, uh, making a sale of 150 units. So that 150 units, we are selling at $116 per unit. So our sale is 150 units multiplied by $116. It turns out to be $116. Multiply by 116 is $17,400. Okay. Now we have to find out cost of goods sold. Remember, we are working under FIFO, so we have to sell the old inventory first. So we have to use this 54 left with zero. So we put 54 here. And how much was the cost? $64. So we take $64. Now we have to sell 150. We only got 54. So that means we need how many more? So 150 minus, sorry, uh, minus 54. So we need 96 more. So we're going to sell 90. So where this 96 comes from? The 96 comes from the purchase that we have made for here so when we remove 96 from here we left with 18 but they got this at 75 dollars and for each right so we multiply this with uh, 74 uh, 74 or 75 75 so 54 multiply by 64 is equal to 3456 and 96 multiply by 75 is equal to 7200 if we add 7200 plus 3456 is 10656 now one of the things they asked us to calculate was ending inventory. So what is the ending inventory? So we have used this 78 over here. We have used 102 from this 156 left with 54. Then we used this 54 for the second sale. And then we got our 96 from this 114. So we left with 18. So what is our ending inventory is going to be ending inventory is the 18 uh, units that we purchase at $75 per piece. So 75, 18 multiplied by 75 is turns out to be 1350 1350 so that is our ending inventory now we also have to calculate the gross profit so gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold so what is our sale first sale that we have made is $18,000 and the second sale we made is 
400. So our total sale is 18,000 plus 17,400 is equal to 35,400 minus cost of goods sold. So here our cost of goods sold was 10,818 and here we have 10,656. So we add 10,818 plus 10,656. So it's 21,474. So how much is our gross profit would be 35,400 minus 21,474 is equal to 13,926. So the gross profit turns out to be 13,926. So when we have using a FIFO method and selling only the old inventory, we sold this 78 unit first, then 102 units from here, and then later 54 units, and then the remaining 96 units from the third purchase. And we turns out our invent and ending inventory is the new item. So always, uh, the, in the ending inventory for FIFO method, the ending inventory is the new item. All right, so you got your ending inventory and your gross profit. So this is what they ask us to calculate. Cost of goods sold, we already calculated ending merchandise inventory and we have calculated the gross profit. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do the, do the same thing for LIFO uh, method. So the same thing, this is our requirement number one, and now we're going to do the LIFO method. So in LIFO method, we're going to do the opposite. So it's a second requirement, and we are using the LIFO method, but we'll be using the same facts that we have used in the previous uh, question. So again, we are starting our uh, journey on January 1st, where we have a uh, total units available is 78. And the unit, the total cost given to us is 4,290. So if we take the 4,290 and divide by 78 is equal to $55. So our unit cost is $55 per unit, all right? Now, again, on January 5th, we are purchasing 156 units at $64 per unit. But in uh, on January 13th, we are making a sale, but it's a LIFO method that we have to use this time. We are using the LIFO method here. So sale would be the same. How many items we are selling? We are selling 180 units for $100. So that means our total sale again is $18,000. So far, you do not see any change. Now, it's going to change when we calculate cost of goods sold. So if we're talking about cost of goods sold, in the LIFO method, we have to sell the new inventory first. So which is the new inventory compared to January 1st and January January 1st and January 5th? This 156 units that you have just purchased is a new inventory. So we are going to put 156. But we need some items more from the old inventory because 156 does not cover 180 units. So 156 multiplied by 64 plus we, how many more items we need? We need 24 more items. So we're gonna take 24 more items here. We left with 54 here. So 24 items multiplied by 55. So 156 units multiply by $64. So we have 9,984 plus 24 multiply by 55 is 1,320. So our total cost of goods sold is 1,320 plus 9,984 
is eleven thousand three hundred and four dollars so it's a little different than what we did last time okay and this is completely sold we have only zero item left here we have only 54 items left in the new inventory now again on 8 1 18 we making a purchase and this time we are purchasing 114 crates at $75 each all right very good and then on 126 we are making a sale how much is the sale we are selling 150 units or 150 crates at $116 each so our sale is 150 multiplied by hundred and sixteen dollars so how much is going to be our sale is 150 multiplied by 116 is 17,400 again our sales number are still the same now we're going to calculate the cost of goods sold so what is the cost of goods sold we are selling 150 units right so when we are selling 150 units, we have to sell the new items first because we are under LIFO. So we're gonna take all the 114 items here that we have purchased at $75. Plus, because 114 does not cover 150, we need 36 more items. So we will go up here and we grab these 36 items from here. Once we grab this, we left with 18 uh, units here. So we're going to multiply this 36 because we're taking from here at a $55 cost. So our cost of goods sold will be 114 multiplied by 75 is 8,550 plus 36 multiplied by 55 is 1,980 plus 8,550. So the total cost of goods sold is 10,350. So we're done with this question, but we'll have to check ending inventory. So what is my ending inventory? My ending inventory is the 18 units that lets over here and it's multiplied by 55. So the cost of the ending inventory is 18 multiplied by 55 is equal to 990. So the ending inventory we know is $990. Now we have to calculate uh, the, the uh, gross profit. And gross profit, as we talked about in the past, is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold. We have two sales. One was $18,000 and the other was $17,400. The sale again is the same as $35,400. $18,000 plus $17,400. And now we have to calculate the cost of goods sold, $11,304 and $10,350. So I'm going to take $11,304 plus $10,350 is 21,654. And when we subtract this number from 35,400, we get 13,746. So the gross profit, it turns out to be 13,746 and ending inventory of $990. So you notice that your sales number is not changing whether you use LIFO and FIFO, but your ending inventory numbers are changing. Because in FIFO, you were keeping new inventory in hand and selling the old inventory first, your in ending inventory is higher. And when you are selling the old inventory first, your cost of goods sold is lower. But when you are selling a new inventory and keeping the old inventory in hand, your ending inventory is lower compared to the FIFO, but the cost of goods sold is higher because you're selling new inventory. And I am going to show you one more thing, but let's first do the third requirement, which is the weighted 
average method that they talk about, so requirement number three, and we're going to calculate the same thing again. So the requirement number three, weighted average. So uh, how we do that, let's find out in a minute. So first, again, we're going to start our inventory on January 1st with uh, how many units we have. We have uh, 78 units and each unit again is uh, 4,290 divided by 78 is $55. So per unit cost is $55. Okay, very good. And then on January 5th, we purchase 156 units for $64 a, a unit. Okay, so at this point, we're going to do a total here. Actually, not here, but here, total cost. So we purchased 78 units at $55 per. So what is our total cost is 78 multiplied by 55 is again, the number that has been given to us 4,299. And then when we calculate, it's, uh, I'm sorry, when we purchase 156 units at a cost of $64, we paid 9,984. So at this point, how many units we got? we got 78 plus 156. So we have 234 units. And what is the total cost? Uh, 4290 plus 9984 is 14,274. So what is our weighted average cost per unit that would be 14,274 divided by the total unit of 234 so let's see 14,274 divided by 234 is $61 so our per unit cost is $61 at this time how many we are selling so our sale is on January 18th, sorry, January 13th, we are selling, and we are, sale, we are selling 180 units multiplied by $100. So our sale again is $18,000. So you notice the sale is not changing here. So what would be our cost of goods sold? 180 units multiplied by $61 that we have calculated. So that gave us $61 multiplied by 180 is $10,980. Now, how many we have sold 180 out of this 234? So how many we left? So we left 234 minus 180 is 54 items. So we left with 54 items at $61 per, per unit, 54 units at $61. Now, what we are doing on 18, we are purchasing again. So what we are purchasing, we are purchasing 114 multiply uh, uh, units at per unit cost of $75. So what is our total cost? The total cost is 114 multiplied by 75 is 8,550. And what would be the cost of this 54 that we have per, uh, left over from the over here? And 61 is going to be uh, 54 multiplied by 61 is 3,294. So how many total units we have is 54 units plus 114 is 168 units. And what is the total cost of these is 3,294. 
8554 plus 8550 is 11,854. Per unit, cost per unit is 11,844 divided by 168. Is seventy dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so on January twenty sixth, we are selling. The sale is hundred and fifty crates at hundred and sixteen dollars. It's again going to be the same. Hundred and fifty multiplied by hundred and sixteen is seventeen thousand four hundred dollars. And cost of goods sold would be. 150 units multiply by $70.50 that we have calculated here. So we're going to multiply by $70.50. So 150 units multiply by 70.5 is 10,575. Okay, so we sold 150 units. So we do not have 150 anymore, so we left with 18 units. So what would be our ending inventory? Ending inventory would be 18 units that's left over, multiply by the uh, last price calculated, $70.50. So it's 18 multiplied by 70.5, it gives you 1,200 and 69 and what would be your gross profit the gross profit would be sales so we have a sale of 18,000 and we have a sale of 17,500 so that add these two with 35,400 and we have two cost of goods sold one was 10,980 and the other is 10,575. So we let's take 10,980 plus 10,575 as give us 21,555. And when we subtract this from 35,400, we get a gross profit of 13,845. Okay, now I'm going to show you something over here. So we have a uh, so here I'm going to put ending inventory on this side. And here I'm going to put cost of goods sold. All right, so we have three ending inventory one, two, six, nine for weighted average, and we have 13,350 when it comes to FIFO, and when it comes to LIFO, it's 990. So the lowest number is 990. I'm going to put it over here. And the highest number is uh, 1,350. It's right over here. And for weighted average cost, the ending inventory is 1,269. Now cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold for weighted average method is 10,575. So I'm going to put 10,575. And what is the, uh, the highest cost of goods sold we have so far? Is 21,474 in FIFO. And what is LIFO? Uh, 21,654. So which one is highest? 21,000. 654 
and the lowest is 21,474. So you notice where is this ending inventory 1,350 is coming from? It's coming from the FIFO method. So the FIFO method gives you the inventory, highest inventory, and the lowest cost of goods sold. So the FIFO method gives you highest inventory. So I'm just putting a note here, FIFO method gives highest ending inventory and lowest cost of goods sold. Why? It's highest inventory because the ending inventory has new item. And why lowest cost of goods sold? Because it has mostly old items. And again, now let's look for LIFO. LIFO is giving you the lowest ending inventory. So this is our LIFO here. So LIFO gives method, gives lowest ending inventory because it has old item. It's selling the new item first and highest cost of goods sold because we are selling mostly new items. And you notice that the number in the middle is our weighted average. So always, almost always, it's never changes, LIFO method, you will find the highest ending inventory and lowest cost of goods sold. And in FIFO method, sorry, FIFO method, you will find the highest inventory and lowest cost of goods sold. And in LIFO method, you will find the lowest in, uh, ending inventory and the highest cost of goods sold. And weighted average would always fall between the FIFO method and the LIFO method. So let's see if we have completed our uh, three uh, uh, requirements for this question. So if you guys have any questions, feel, please feel free to ask me either via email or uh, uh, or you can show up uh, on my office hours. I have an office hours Monday through uh, Friday. Sorry, Monday through Thursday. We don't have office hours on Friday. So if you have any question, please, uh, you are more than welcome to ask anything about these videos. Also, please read a chapter at least one and watch other videos as well. Thank you for watching.